to the late Willis Ward, the Bard of Sambourne. Willis was the go-to man for everything, and he played a huge part in all the previous productions. Practical and creative, he was always on hand, to rain or shine, and we had plenty of rain, to erect a gazebo, rustle up a castle turret, or produce a hanging moon at a moment's notice. His creation of props were legendary. Whatever it was, he threw himself into all productions with gusto. And of course, in normal circumstances, it would have been seeing him here today, introducing the entertainment with a few wisecracks, likely dressed in fishnet tights or a top hat. <laughs> so this one is dedicated to you, Willis, and let's hope we can do it justice. So our play today is Richard III, Shakespeare's tale of a scheming, treacherous and murdering king who would stop at nothing, which included disposing of all his close relatives to get what he wanted. But, with spoiler alert, as in all moral tales, good triumphs in the end. And as we now know, Richard not only got his comeuppance, he also ended up unceremoniously buried under a car park in Leicester. <laughs> but we spared you that part so we couldn't borrow a JCB. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern allurums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front. He capers nimbly in a lady's bedchamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I, who am not made for sportive tricks, I, who am so rudely stamped by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent half breathing into this world, and that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me when I hold by them. So, since I cannot play the lover, I am determined to prove a villain. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, drunken prophecies, libels and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. But soft, dive thoughts down to my soul, here Clarence comes. Good day, brother. What means this armed guard that waits upon your grace? His majesty, tendering my person safety, hath appointed this conduct to convey me to the tower. Ah, and so it is when men are ruled by women. It is not the king that sends you to the tower. His lady, his wife, my lady Grey, it is she that tempers him to this extremity. We are not safe, tyrants, brother. We are not safe. I will unto the king. This disgrace in brotherhood hurts me more than I can say. I know it pleases neither of us well. Well, fear not. Your imprisonment will not be long. I will deliver you or die for you. I must perforce. Farewell. <laughs> uh, go tread the path that thou shalt ne'er return, plain simple Clarence. I do love thee so that I shall shortly send thy soul to heaven. Clarence hath not another day to live. The which being done, and the king sent on to God's mercy, will leave me the world to bustle in. And I shall marry Warwick's daughter. What? What? Even though I killed her husband and her father? <laughs>
and of thy royal blood. Oh, cursed be the hand that made these holes. Cursed the heart that had the heart to do it, if ever he have wife. Let her be made more miserable by the death of him. A vaunt, dreadful minister of hell, thou hadst but power over his mortal body, his soul thou canst not have, therefore be gone. Sweet saint for charity, be not so cursed. Thou love of foul deformity, for tis thy presence that exhales this blood from cold and empty veins where no blood dwells. Tis thy deeds, inhuman and unnatural, provokes this deluge most unnatural. Sweet saint, divine perfection of a woman, I did not kill your husband. In thou foul throat, thou liest. Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood. I was provoked by her slanderous tongue. And thou was provoked by thy bloody mind that dreamt on aught but butcheries. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant you. Dost grant me, hedgehog. Oh, but he was gentle, mild and virtuous. The better for the king of heaven that now hath him. He is in heaven. Where thou shalt never come. For thou and fit for any place but hell. Yes, or one place else, if you would hear me name it. Some dungeon. <laughs> Your bedchamber. <laughs> Your beauty hath been the cause of this effect. Your beauty that did haunt my sleep to undertake the death of all the world, that I might spend one hour in your sweet bosom. Black night overshade thy day, and death thy life. It is a quarrel, just and reasonable, to be avenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft thee of thy husband did it to help thee to a better husband. Oh, and where is he? Here. Why dost thou spit at me? Would it were a mortal poison for thy sake? Now, out of my sight, thou dost infect my eyes. Your eyes, dear lady, have infected mine. Your beauty hath made them blind with weeping. Lo, I lend thee this sharp-pointed sword, and do humbly beg for death upon my knee. <coughs> Arise, dissembler, though I wish thy death. I will not be thy executioner. Then bid me kill myself. And I will do it. That safe to wear this ring? Uh, to, to take is not to give. See how that ring encompasseth thy finger just as thou breast encloseth my poor heart. And if thou would just grant me one favour from thy gracious hand, thou dost confirm my happiness forever. What is it? That, having solemnly interred Edward and wet his grave with my repentant tears, I will with all expedient duty see you. Grant me this boon. <coughs> with all my heart, and much it please me to see you become so penitent. Farewell. Was ever woman in this humour wound? Was ever woman in this humour one? <laughs> I shall have her, but I shan't keep her long. Well, even though I killed her father and her husband, and me, with no friends to back my suit, save the plain devil and my dissembled good looks. Oh, shine out, fair sun, till I have bought a glass that I may see my shadow as I pass.
sunshine with a ray of golden hair. They do me wrong, and I will not endure it. Who is it that says unto the king that I am stern, forsooth, and love them not? I must be held a rancorous enemy. Come, come, we know your meaning, Brother Gloucester. You envy my advancement and my friends. My brother, imprisoned by your designs, myself held in contempt, the nobility basically ruined. I never did incense his majesty against the Duke of Clarence, my lord, you do me shameful injury, forced me to draw me in these vile suspects. Small joy have I in being England's queen. Thy honour, state, and seat are due to me. Tis time to speak. My pains are quite forgot. Out, devil. Thou hast killed my husband Henry in the tower, and Edward, my poor son, at Tewkesbury. O oh, murderous villain, and so still thou art. What makes thou in my sight, withered witch? Were thou not banished on pain of death? I was, but I find more pain in banishment than death can yield me here by my abode. A husband and a son thou owest to me, and you, a kingdom, and all of you, allegiance. This sorrow that I have by right is yours, and the pleasures you usurp are mine. Can curses pierce the clouds and enter heaven? Why then give way dull clouds to my quick curses? <laughs> Edward thy son, that now is the Prince of Wales, for Edward our son that was the Prince of Wales, die in his youth by like untimely violence. Thyself a queen, me that was a queen, outlive thy glory like my wretched self. Long mayst you live to wail thy children's death. To see another as I see thee now, decked in thy rights, as thou art stalled in mine. Long die thy happy days before thy death, and after many lengthened hours of grief, die neither mother, wife, nor England's queen. Have done thy charm, the hateful, wicked hag. And leave thee out, they dog, for thou shalt hear me. No sleep close up that deadly eye of thine, unless it is while some tormented dream affrights thee with a hell of ugly devils. Thou elfish mark, abortive, rooting hog, a slave of nature, and the son of hell. Thou slander of thy heavy mother's womb, thou loathed issue of thy father's loins. <sighs> Poor painted queen, vain flourish of my fortune. Why strew'st thou sugar on that bottled spider? whose deadly web and snare is thee about. Fool, fool, thy wet thy knife to kill thyself. The day will come when thou shalt need me to help thee curse that poisonous bunchback toad. Buckingham, take heed of yonder dog. Look when he fawns, beware of him. Death, sin, death, and hell have all set their marks on him. What does she say, my Lord Buckingham? <laughs> Nothing that I respect, my gracious Lord. What? Dost thou scorn me for my gentle counsel and soothe the devil that I warn thee from? Oh, remember this another day when he shall split 
thy very heart with sorrow. My head of standard end of the curses. The secret mischiefs that I have set about, I lay upon the grievous charge of others. And thus I clothe my naked villainy in old odd ends stolen forth from holy writ. And thus appear a saint <laughs> when I in fact the devil. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel. Talk like an angel. But I Thank you. <laughs> We've now reached Act 4, and a lot has happened since Act 1. I hope you've been following the action. King Henry is dead, and Edward is dead, and Richard's blood brother Clarence is dead, and Richard has managed to become king. But this still isn't good enough for him. There is potential competition out there. So Richard asks his remaining ally, the Duke of Buckingham, to eliminate the two princes in the tower. Yes, Richard is on a roll. <laughs> Good day, Buckingham. My gracious sovereign. Buckingham, give me your hand. Now let us play the touch to see if thou art current gold indeed. Buckingham, young Edward lives. Think now what I would speak. Say on my loving lord. I say I would be king. Right. So you are my thrice renowned lord. But am I king? Tis so. But young Edward lives. True, noble prince. <laughs> Shall I be plain? I wish the two bastards in the tower dead and would have it suddenly performed. Give me some little breath, some pause, dear lord, before I positively speak in this. High reaching Buckingham doth become circumspect. No longer will he be neighbour to my counsels. James Tyrrell, your most obedient subject. Tyrrell! <laughs> Tyrrell, the very man. Dost thou resolve to kill a friend of mine? Please you, but I would rather kill two enemies. Ah, and there you have it. Two deep enemies. I mean, of those two bastards in the tower. I will dispatch it straight. <clears throat> my lord, I claim the gift, my due by promise, on which your honour and your faith is pawned. The earldom of Hereford, which you have promised, I shall possess. I am not in the giving vein today. And is it thus? Repays my deep service with such contempt? Made I him king for this? Oh, let me be gone while my fearful head is on. Can't seem to face up to the facts. 
I'm tense and nervous and I can't relax Can't sleep cause my bed's on fire Don't touch me, I'm a real live wire Psycho killer, cascade to mellow and drop into the rotten mouth of death. Hiding in these confines, slyly have I lurked to watch the waning of mine enemies. Who comes here? <laughs> Oh, my poor princess, my tender babes, hover about me with your airy wings, hear your mother's lamentation. So many miseries have crazed my voice that my woe-weary tongue is still and mute. I had an Edward till a Richard killed him. I had a husband till a Richard killed him. Thou had, a, had an Edward till a Richard killed him. Thou had a Richard till a Richard killed him. From forth the kennel of thy womb, a hellhound hath crept to hunt us all to death. <sighs> Oh, thou foul defacer of God's handiwork, thy womb let loose to chase us to our graves. Earth gapes, hell burns, fiends roar, saints pray that he be suddenly conveyed from hence. Cancel his bond of life, dear God, I pray, that I may live and say, the dog is dead. Thou didst usurp my place. Dost thou not usurp my just position of my sorrow? Thou proud neck bears half my burdened yoke, from which even here I slip my weary head and leave the burden of it all on thee. Farewell, York's wife, and queen of sad mischance. Those English woes will make me smile in France. <laughs> Who interrupts me in my expedition? Tell me, that vile hey? servant, where are my children? <laughs> <laughs> art thou my son? Madam, I will not brook the accent of reproof. Thou camest on earth to make the earth my hell. A grievous burden was thy birth to me. Therefore take with thee my most grievous curse. The little souls of Edward's children. Bloody thou art, and bloody will be thy end. Shame saves, serves thy life, and doth thy death attend. Stay, madam. I would speak a word. You have a daughter, Elizabeth. I love thy daughter, and I would make her Queen of England. How canst thou woo her? That I would learn from you. I'd be tempted by the devil thus. 
Aye, if the devil tempts you to do good. That did kill my children. And in your daughter's womb I bury them. Where, in that nest of spicery, they will make cells unto themselves for your recomfiture. Shall I then woo my daughter to thy will? And be a happy mother by the deed. I go. Relenting fool, shallow changing woman. Richard's only real ally, refused to kill the princes in the tower. Guess what? He lost his head. Though the princes still didn't survive. Meanwhile, the Duke of Richmond and his army are preparing to march against King Richard. Before the battle, Richard tries to get some rest in his tent, but the pesky ghosts of the people he has killed invade his dreams. Sorry, Richard. But payback is coming, and it's a bitch. <laughs> Up with my tent. I will lie here tonight, but where tomorrow? quiet hour with thee, now fills thy sleep with perturbation. Tomorrow in the battle, think on me, and fall on thy edgeless sword. Despair and die. Despair, Despair and, and die. die. First was I that helped thee to the crown. Last was I that felt thy tyranny. Oh, in battle, think on Buckingham, and die in terror of thy guiltiness. And die, die in terror of thy guiltiness. guiltiness. Dream on thy cousin smothered in the tower. Let us be left within thy bosom, Richard, and, and wake thee down to ruin, shame, and death. Thy nephew's soul, bid thee despair and die. Despair, despair and, and die! die. Oh. 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 Find my wounds, find me another horse. Jeez, you have mercy! But soft, I do but dream. O oh, coward conscience, why dost thou afflict me so? Thy conscience comes with a thousand several tongues, and every tongue a several tale to tell, and every tale condemns me for a villain. I shall despair. No creature will ever love me. Should I die, no soul will ever pity me. No one will ever wish me happy Father's Day.
last time. Now I'm going to give you a damn good thrashing. A horse. A horse. My kingdom for a horse. That's a cripple, would you? The bloody dog is dead. The bloody dog is dead! Courageous regiment, wear it, enjoy it, and make much of it! England has long been mad and scarred herself. The brother blindly shed the brother's blood. The father rashly slaughtered his own son. The son compelled been butchered to the sire. Oh, now let Richmond and Elizabeth, the true succeeders of each royal house by God's fair ordinance, conjoin together. Now civil wounds are stopped, peace lives again, that she may long live here. God say, Amen! Jesus. 